I think that only when uh, self-interest is threatened do people uh, band together to change anything, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't see a lot of this is going to, oh, we need this for the world. Now, maybe Gen Z will be different. It seems like there's a different ethos, but I guess young people have always. Yeah, young people are always the more let's let's do it for the future. That's yeah. sure the 70s, mm -hmm. you know? peace and love and environmentalism are on power right yeah yeah now. <laughs> yeah all the environmentalists from the 70s are all the, the hippies ones. should have should have fixed this yeah uh no it's that's a general genuine general theme mm -hmm. so when you're young you're ready idealistic. to change the world yeah. you're idealistic you don't think things are impossible or too hard and, and you're, you're not in the system yet community focused yeah you're not in the system yet yeah, you yeah. haven't been indoctrinated into your place of work for 12 years or whatever you know and then as you get older you tend to become more focused on my own family and my own stuff, you tend to become more conservative and you tend to realize that it's it's a little bit harder to do what you thought was sure. so easy. If that is true, I wonder, I'm not sure that that's a pattern that has held or will hold, you know, some, some anthropologist of America can maybe tell me. But if that is the case, I wonder if it has to do with the fact that from zero to 18, you're mostly taken care of. So like mm -hmm. your your needs are you're not expected to be independent and when things are provided to you it's much easier to be like we should share we should do all of this and then as you enter into the world and then you start at the bottom of the working totem pole and then you get a family that is dependent upon you mm -hmm. selfishness really re-enters the equation and it's like i look i gotta work i gotta get this back to me and my own and then you raise your own kid in relative security and they yeah. go we gotta sh <laughs> well i think it's partially that i also think it's being in organizations and trying mm -hmm. to getting to the point of being a middle manager or something like that because when you're when i was younger it's like oh yeah why do we need why don't we just band together to solve the food problem for the world mm -hmm. and now i have a, a nine person organization that i can't get to run smoothly yeah, I go, oh yeah. my god i can't organize myself charlie and nine <laughs> other people to get youtube videos up on time every week we screw yeah. it up sometimes and i'm asking that every corporation that has any input into seeds or fertilizer or whatever yeah harmoniously exists like it's a game of the sims so i think you just realize that execution is tough look at obama's healthcare thing yeah right like he was so philosophically excited about that mm. but then in an effort to push it through a 50 person senate 100 person senate 100 person senate he, he had to uh compromise and work and this and that and give and now he's you know i'm sure it's something he's not even that stoked about mm -hmm. it's just i think as you maybe are in more organizations more you realize how complicated this stuff can be sure i think there's two things one is that the pre-existing way of doing things is kind of like a glacier and you're like oh my gosh this is so hard to change but two i think that as i've gotten older I've never thought I would say this. I've realized the value of a lot of the institutions that I thought were just mechanisms of oppression. Mm -hmm. And that while certainly not perfect, they were they were created to solve a problem for someone. And they do some kind of an adequate job, whether you're talking about the the tax system, the government as it currently exists, like there were there have been gains made in the past. And while totally imperfect this this hulking structure of government uh is better than it was and yep. it is and then tearing it down just go let's just help each other is like it's uh then you start tweaking with the existing system and i don't know whether you need a revolution well you're you're an interesting example because you i would say correct me if i'm wrong <clears throat> young more like a revolutionary yeah, in terms certainly. of your ideologies totally. potentially more socialist right i think you fit the kind of charismatic 19 year old that would try to lead an uprising in another <laughs> in another society yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like you were the guy who was gonna overthrow the government and now you're much more moderate have more conservative so what made you shift what's been what converted you from 19 to 32 to that well let me let me just make sure that i i have to think about it so when i was 19 yeah i, mean, I remember we read the communist manifesto and in, in philosophy i was like this makes a ton of sense uh and it does when you read it. It's you know it, and especially for the time that it was written in, uh, that the owners of capital are are controlling the proletariat, and that there needs to be a change. And you're not going to do it by putting in more hours. It made a ton of sense. Uh, I studied in Latin America, and the history in Latin America is very different than history that's taught in the United States. And it's all about colonialism and oppression and and all those sorts of things. And that that heavily informed and still does the way that I that I view the US and its 
sort of empire over mm. the over the 20th century. And then what I, I still hold some of those views, but I guess I would say what changed is that the fundamental belief was that there was a cabal of bad guys at the top and that if we could just get the good people into the top, everything would change. And as I've gotten older, what I've seen is that the bad guys exist at every social strata uh, in similar in similar degrees, degrees, but with limited ability to execute on that uh, selfish intent. And that the problem is not a problem of uh, class versus class. It's like it's the divide in every human heart. It is good versus evil in my own life. And that the only way to start to try to fix what is happening, this is the spiritual part of it, what is happening in Donald Trump's White House or pick anyone's White House, is to figure out the evil that I am committing in my own life and go through the very grueling process of one, identifying it, because nobody thinks they're doing anything evil, mm -hmm. and rooting it out in my own life. Because if I can't do that, of course Donald Trump can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Why would he? He's 70 years old and stuck in his ways. So if I, as a 32-year-old, can't figure it out, well, how could I possibly expect him to? Um, that was the big the big shift is is seeing the people at the top of the pyramid as similar to myself. And then the solution is not in replacing them with people like myself, because mm -hmm. I would probably do the same thing. It's in becoming the type of person who is less mm -hmm. self-centered. So that's the big shift, I would say. And then, yeah. And then what does that lead to? It leads to greater focus on small things, uh, personal responsibility. And uh, I don't know if it goes beyond that. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it does. I also think there's a bit of the devils in the details. Like the more you think about something, the the more you try to actually enact something, the harder it is to be an ideologue about it. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. get concrete with that. We know someone whose father died of brain cancer. Very sad. And they're very, they hate the government. They're very pro universal health care, right? And they think think that's because it would have helped their dad right mm -hmm. until we talk to them about well would it have given your dad's age and his where he was at it's possible that actually our universal health care wouldn't have covered it at all and because there'd be no private insurance it would have all been out of pocket it might have been mm -hmm. a worse system for him and that's a real surprise because it's easy to go the system current system's bad and a new system would fix everything and it's a system where everybody gets food everybody gets education everybody gets this and it's like of course that sounds wonderful but yeah okay how then does that yeah how occur? do we execute it yeah mm -hmm. and I, I think that that's kind of going back to what i was saying like like when you realize how hard it is to get 11 people to make a youtube video once a week you start to think about the execution of stuff mm -hmm. whereas for me when i was 19 i would never have thought of that and if you think that execution is a problem similar to what i said you assume that well the problem can't be that it's difficult to do the problem has to be evil people don't want to do don't it. Don't want to do it. Yeah. Selfish, evil people. And there people. is evil that happens in the world. I'm not saying there is. Of course. Isn't, it, but I, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying is that it's uh, the proportion to which it is occurring is similar at every social strata, but the outcome is, of course, higher given those people at the top mm -hmm. have the ability to start wars, <laughs> uh, control policy, and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. It just gets complicated. Like people don't like that Zuckerberg will allow certain types of political advertisements on the platform. So they say he shouldn't be able to do that which sounds nice until you ask about how would you like to execute that? Do you want mm -hmm. a Facebook team to determine what's allowed to be shown or not? Mm -hmm. Because that might even be a scarier world. And so, yeah, I think that when you ask the question, well, how would you like to execute that? Things get complicated. And I think that's just something that experience shows you, which might be why as you get older, people are less has are more hesitant to kind of tear it all down because mm -hmm. they there's not a lot of brilliant, detailed suggestions. Sure. for how to execute and a I better think, thing. I think there's got to be, and you have to at least give a head nod to when you get, when you benefit from the system, there's of course a desire to not tear whatever you are, your own home down. Mm -hmm. uh, I think well, but that, you think that older people benefit from the system more than younger people? No, I think that they've paid into a system and they are now getting the, the outcome of that, right? So they've worked a lot of their whole life into a, in a capitalist society, they've accrued some wealth, and now it's like, no, I'd rather not pay for every kid's college, <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus when you're in college and all you have is student debt, you're like, I want to get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. But when you're 50, 60 years old and you did pay for your college and you worked for those 10, 20 years, you're like, eh, I kind of think they should have to struggle because I don't want to cover it. Mm -hmm. um, 
so uh yeah i don't know how we i feel like we've <laughs> meandered <laughs> into, a, into a place that i don't really know what point i'm making why are you no longer a socialist revolutionary <laughs> that's the question uh yeah i think i think it's because the 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 big thing is that i assume that evil people were running the world and i don't think that the people who run the world are any more evil than the average person on the street i think that they have mechanisms of power which allow their evil to be magnified in a way that the person on the street just doesn't yeah if you switch places if you traded their places yeah. they they would just do similar exactly stuff. you'd see nepotism and all the same sorts of things that you see i mean did I, I told you about nepotism did i not mention this in the last podcast i don't remember uh briefly so i you know trump's white house and then i was at thanksgiving and uh my one cousin who got a good job gave two or three jobs to my littler cousins <laughs> you know what i mean they're 19 to 20 and they Quick, they got all the low-level jobs at the company. Yeah. What do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, they're, yeah, they're good. They got good grades. They study, they all that. But come on. <laughs> like, this is, this is how Trump's White House happened. Sure. It's the same thing. And I'm not saying that my cousin is a bad person for doing this. Of course he wants to help You're out his little cousin who he knows and trusts. Almost everyone would be a nepotist. I'm saying, yeah, that, that you start to see those, those sorts of patterns occurring at, at all different levels yeah. of of the world and and it's the same you know when your friend the bartender pours you a free drink you know like yeah, yeah. people do favors for the people that they know and like that they that are against the rules yeah. uh so i see it everywhere it just takes on a way worse uh outcome when it happens in the most powerful place on the planet halliburton halliburton anyways we'll hop on what else we got Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.